Everyone, welcome back to the workshop. And look, we're back out in the main workshop. And today we're talking about honeycomb beds. And the reason being is if you've been working with a dialed laser or even a K40, you've probably used maybe a small uh, honeycomb like this, or you've been able to find a honeycomb that fits most of your work surface area, but perhaps you need something bigger. Perhaps you're working at the extended lasers, you're adding the longer rails on, and you want something that covers the whole bed. Now you could go with a couple of these and that would probably work fine, but a company called Nivel has come up with a nice size for the dialed lasers with extensions. And this is it here today. We're gonna take a look at this and I'm gonna go over its specs and features, tell you what I think about it. And we're gonna jump right into that now. The Neville company reached out to me and asked me if I would be interested in checking out their extended honeycomb bed. And I said, great, I've got some extended laser builds coming up and I was wondering what I was gonna do for a larger honeycomb. If you've uh, been following my channel for a while, I talk a lot about the use of honeycombs and how they are really good at helping keep your items clean, both front and backside when mixed with an air assist. Uh, and they also can help with holding down methods in two different ways from both pins and if you have the right kind, such as this one with steel, uh, you can use magnets as well. So they were kind enough to send this to me. Uh, so we're gonna do a bit of an overview, look at it and uh, see how it could function for you. So what comes in the package is of course, you have your primary honeycomb. Now this thing, I can tell you it's made of steel because it's not light. Um, it does come with some good quality rails that are powder coated painted, and then they are riveted together Inside, they have the honeycomb weave made from steel and not aluminum. And then going through side to side, you have some support rails as well. Down along the bottom, they have both a metric and inch ruler gauge in case you want to um, measure your material real quick, but that's not gonna be something that's terribly useful for alignment on your laser. It's more just for checking material size. So uh, the other thing that is included, and I'll show a close up of this is, they give you eight of these rubber feet that can go on the corners, both sides. I've only put them on the bottom just due to the way I tend to use this with my lasers. I don't necessarily want them in the way on the top, but you can put them on both sides, especially if you're gonna flip this over and use both sides from time to time. Also included in the package are four of these little magnets with plastic covers on them. They of course do stick to the bed. Now they're not, overly strong, but they would help in holding down some lightweight material. You of course can then add your own magnets. You can get some neodymium rare earth magnets and um, make some of your own that way. Um, but this is a nice way to be able to hold down material. Uh, it just magnetizes to it. But if it's too thick, these magnets might not reach through it. And that's where I'm getting some of the rare earth, you know, neodymium magnets would help. And then also they provide a full size sheet of metal that goes underneath um, the panel uh, to protect your work surface from any overburn. Uh, there is this protective coating on it on both sides. So of course you're gonna wanna pull that off before using this because you do not wanna burn through this plastic. All right, let's talk a little bit about the actual dimensions of this frame. So front to back or side to side, depending on your layout, the long distance looks to be about 37 and 3 8 inches or just under 950 millimeters wide or long. And then the short distance looks to be about 18 and 5 8 or roughly 500 millimeters in length. Now your actual honeycomb panel from within side the frame, the long side is about uh, 905 millimeters or 35 and 5 8 inches and the short distance, let's make sure we're on the frame, looks to be about 455 millimeters or 17 and 7 eighths inches wide. So that's, if you're just looking at just strictly the honeycomb surface, that is gonna be your dimensions. One of the things that you do wanna keep in mind with these is that you do want it to still be a level surface. So by putting these rubber feet on there, we're elevating the edges um, and then it's got a span here the channels are really the only thing that's giving it rigidity side to side this way because our other bars, they're supported in here. And even those are gonna be providing minimal support. So um, if we put a straight edge on here, 
yeah, we've got a little bit of a dip. Now, understanding that the design of a honeycomb bed is to allow as much air and material debris smoke to pass through and escape with while still supporting your material and your project on top, it's kind of hard to have the mix of those two. So I'm not knocking them in any way. It's just something to be keep in mind in how you're going to support this. Now, you do really want to have airflow underneath this whole thing because if you put this whole thing flat without these rubber feet on there and you set it down on a flat surface yes that will support it but all these little pockets are then going to collect smoke and debris and that's not going to be effective at removing that particulate it's going to still possibly stain your material and if the laser passes back over that area could could create what are called micro explosions a little they're going to heat up those gases in that smoke and uh, cause possibly fire. So we want to make sure there's airflow under here. We want to make sure that it is supported as level. So I'm going to go ahead and add some plywood spacer blocks, uh, mimicking my support. We're going to see how that looks. And then we're going to double check, make sure that the honeycomb itself still stays flat. So, okay, so I've got it set up on some spacer blocks. As you can see here, I've got some 3 8 inch plywood and I've got it in both corners as well. So if we pan over there and there, you see they're all supported. On um, my assembly table, which should be flat, it's a torsion table. So this, we can kind of see if there's any sag going on with the frame or with the uh, honeycomb. So got the straight edge here, we're gonna set on here. And looking at the frame, there's just a slight gap there. I don't know if you can see that, let's zoom in. And uh, there's just a very, very slight gap in that that's acceptable in the lasers. I mean, you do have some depth of cut. But now we want to look at side to side of the honeycomb itself. And here, let me raise you back up a little bit so you can see that better. There you've got a little more gap between from the end where it goes up to meet to the middle, to the other end. So, I mean, that's gonna be expected. I mean, it's a spring steel surface and it does have supporting rods in there. And this is quite a large expanse. I'm not knocking them in any way. But so when we want this airflow underneath here, but we want our surface level, we need to make sure it's supported. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a block to see how it works. I'll throw in another 3 8 inch Spacer in there, we'll see how that works and go from there. All right, so I've cut another block here, 3 8 inch. It's basically the same height as these others. So let's go ahead and slide it here in the middle. See if that makes up a difference. Try to get this back on all of our supports. So now if we put our straight edge on, we still have a dip and Oh, actually, they're on the wrong foot there. There we go, make sure they're all laying flat. Now we still have a slight dip here in the middle. Let me zoom back in. So it's helping some, but I think if we add another eighth inch, that's probably gonna fill that gap. So let's go ahead and do that. Just taking a couple scraps here, and a three eighths inch piece and an eighth inch piece, which will hopefully make up that gap. And I'm just gonna glue this one on here. Wrapping it right in the middle there, pushing it down. Nothing too precise about this. Just trying to make up that space. All right, so we glued our block together. I just put an eighth inch piece of scrap on here in the middle to see if that makes up the difference. We'll set that right in the middle of the board. Make sure these are all resting on the frame and not our feet. There we go, that looks good. Those are all good. Put our straight edge back down. And actually, it looks like that's maybe just a touch too much. Let me zoom back in here. You see it's touching in the center, but if I pan over to the side, I think you can see there's just a little gap there, touches again, little gap down there. So now all I gotta do is sand that down a little bit. We'll get that as flat as it can be. 
and we'll just know that in the middle of our board, we've got to have that support just to keep things perfectly level. All right, so holding down options, I've got a piece of, this looks like 1 16th inch balsa, and it is pretty warped, but this is where utilizing things like these magnets come in pretty handy because you can just simply place them on top of the material, and it does a pretty good job of holding things down flat. Now that's great if it's thin like this and you don't need to work the whole area, you could move these to the side and that would help out as well to definitely hold it down. But if you're using something thicker, say this one eighth inch piece of Baltic birch, you know, you can see this still holds, it'll hold it, but it still allows it to move around. But if you have a 3D printer, these are super simple to make. They're just these little pins that you can push down into the honeycomb and you can grab the corners. You can put them up as tight to the post as possible in whatever pattern needed. And you can then rotate them if you need just a very little bit of mount holding on. And that is going to hold your material in nice and well. So, All right, so let's take a look at how some of these lasers will fit on this frame or around this frame. So right now I've got the Sculptfun S10 sitting on it. And the way the feet are made up, they've got this L kind of shape to them. They do fit uh, along the perpendicular rails. They do fit on the honeycomb frame. So you could use this as is, and you'd have plenty of workspace. And with even out extending the laser and using the whole honeycomb, this would be doable. But if you extend the rails, and I'd have to double check, the feet are going to go beyond this front and back. And so they are wide enough that as long as they are uh, outside of the length. They do fit outside of the frame as well. So that should give you some option to then, once you extend it, this would sit outside of it, but you do need to remember, you do want to elevate this frame. You want that airflow underneath. So you want to keep in mind your height. You want to make sure that you have enough adjustability in your laser once you set this down, because as it is, I have this raised up it's, uh, it's a good inch over the bottom surface that the feet are sitting on. So just keep that in mind as you're working with this laser. Let's also take a look at another popular one, the X-Tool D1. All right, so we have the X-Tool D1 here, and this is a slightly different frame. Uh, it's a little bit wider and has a kind of a shallower stance. So the problem here is the feet will go around it but you've got your Wi-Fi adapter such, you've got your wires coming down here. And so you're gonna want to, if you're using the X-Tool D1, you're gonna wanna probably have some rails while this is also elevated to be able to sit on and keep it up a little bit higher so that you have room for cable management and you have the adjustability on your uh, laser module as well. But there's plenty of room side to side for those feet to go around it. And once you've got this lengthened, your, uh, your feet are probably gonna be outside the extents of the bed anyway. So the uh, laser should fit outside of this, but I would just be concerned on how you have your cables run with this one that uh, you do get it up elevated and out of the way. All right, so that is my overview of this Nivel extended honeycomb bed. I think this is gonna be great. Once I get around to extending one of my lasers, I will still have a full, honeycomb surface to work from. I really like that it is made out of steel and not aluminum. That'll be more durable and it allows me to utilize magnets with it in addition to the 3D printed pens. I have a link down below where you can purchase this yourself. It is going to be affiliate link and that does give a little kickback to me. So I hope you don't mind, but if you found this useful and you found you wanted one yourself, that does give a little bit of a commission to me that helps me continue to create content on this channel. But as always, no pressure. I just appreciate you watching the videos and uh, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave those down below. We'll be adding more content. So if you want to catch what else I'm doing in my workshop, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you haven't uh, been with us, uh, my friend at the Clack Shack and I, we do a Sunday night live stream where we answer your questions about lots of things, lasers, but anything workshop. So check out the link in my channel for that. Come join us, ask your questions or just hang out. It's always a great time. So I hope you learned something. I hope you found this inspirational. If you have any questions or comment, again, leave them down below. I'll get back to you. Otherwise, I hope you get out in your workshop and can make something too. We'll catch you next time.